Yep, that's me as a teenager. You can tell by the glasses and the fashion choices, I was never going to be the prom queen. Nor was I ever going to get to sit with the popular kids. And I almost made it through high school without one single boy ever noticing me. Now, to assure my social status, or lack thereof, I actually did six years of science and five and a half years of math in four years of high school. I did letter, but not in sports. This was an academic decathlon letter. It's a you know, four-month study fest where we get tested in a bunch of subjects like calculus, economics, et cetera, and there were nine members on the team. This guy was one of them, and his name was Davey Barker. Uh, he was pretty funny and cute, and I sat next to him for four months studying calculus, and boy, I had a huge crush on him. Now, one day, this, as we were approaching the competition for academic decathlon, we suddenly found ourselves holding hands. It caught us completely by surprise. And even more surprising, we did not let go. And now that we were joined permanently at the fingertips, we drove home that night after the practice, and we had the following conversation. We were pretty horrified by the drama that most of our friends and their relationships they had in high school, so we decided we needed rules. We decided we needed to be best friends, and we needed to talk about stuff because we had no idea what we were doing. The other thing that was going on here, too, was we fell into this like nerd love, very innocent, very sweet, very naive. We walked each other to class. We talked a lot about math and science and the meaning of life. And every day after school, we would go to one of our houses and we would watch reruns of Star Trek. <laughs> yeah. Now, we were just content holding hands. We both missed out on that you know, formative experience in junior high where we had a chance to play spin the bottle or post office, and we had never kissed another person. And we admitted this to each other, that we had no idea what we were doing. We were just the blind leading the blind. So we decided we would just proceed to hold hands and enjoy that. But we lived in a little teeny tiny town in Alaska. There were only 400 kids in our entire high school, and it was the only high school in town. And at some point, the other kids started to notice that we had never kissed, and a couple of months had gone by, and rumors started to fly that all we did was that we sat around talking about math, science, and holding hands. We were at so much anxiety about this picture-perfect movie moment kiss, and we had no idea how to get into it. But the pressure finally got to us, the peer pressure, and we found ourselves one night in this pitch-black room face-to-face, it felt like 10 hours, but it could have only been like 10 seconds. And we suddenly were like <laughs> And it was so, like tongues and lips and teeth and oh, so much spit. <laughs> it was horrible. And I was horrified. I was horrified. That was not what it was supposed to be like. It was supposed to be like the movies. So we gathered ourselves together silently, got in the car, started driving home driving him back to his home, and I couldn't believe it. We were like not speaking, and it was so tense. It was the most awkward 10 minutes of my entire life. I suddenly broke the silence, and I said, I am so sorry, I'm so sorry. I kissed like a gagging goldfish. <laughs> and he said, I'm so sorry, too. I kiss like a gagging goldfish as well. And we were both relieved. We both had at least the common experience of kissing like gagging goldfish. But then we also said, you know what? We've been breaking our rules. So we reaffirmed that we needed to have each other's back. We needed to be best friends. We let the other people get to us. And it was our relationship and nobody else's. Second, we decided not to, we, we, only, we need to talk about stuff, but we also need to remember if we can't talk about it, we can't do it. That was the new rule. All right. So we also decided we needed some practice. That was the thing we were missing. So we did, resolved that every day after school when we were watching Star Trek, we would kiss once. <laughs> and the second kiss was worse than the first one. <laughs> so the third day, which was kiss three, yeah, you know, it, was, it was getting a little better. And the fourth kiss was even better, but the fifth one, yes. We finally understood the fireworks. We understood what the movies were, what was happening in the movies, and all the love songs started to make sense. 
So practice made perfect, and we became normal, and we were very relieved. We might be nerds, but we were normal nerds. Now, does this story have a happy ending? Well, if our first kiss taught us nothing, is that life is not like the movies. We did date off and on for about 10 years, and our rules never changed. In fact, we're still friends to this day, and we still talk about stuff. I've had relationships since then, and there's been other rules that have shown up in those other relationships, but in my opinion, these two rules, be best friends and talk about stuff, are still the two best rules that can, a person could ever have in their relationships. The other thing that was really fascinating about this particular experience was the beauty that came out of that really awkward moment. That horrible, horrible first kiss was really awkward, but the best conversation and the best rules came out of that moment of awkwardness. So my call to action for you is the next time you were in a very awkward situation in an elevator or in an enclosed space with a stranger and you can just feel that tense, it's not like the movies moment, I want you to just embrace the awkwardness. And then I want you to chase the awkwardness down. I want you to love it, embrace it, wrestle it to the ground and kiss it like a gagging goldfish. Thank you. <laughs>